Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Marco Landry and this is episode two of two episodes talking about the chain conversion project for my Yamaha R3 where I take a 520 chain and convert it to a 415 chain and in the process I've converted uh, or I've swapped the rear rotor on my wheel I've replaced the sprocket in the back of the bike with a 415 sprocket and today we will complete the process by mounting uh, this wheel on the bike, changing the front sprocket, fitting the chain properly, making sure it's the right length, cutting the, the, the chain to the right length, and then installing a master rivet link on that chain. So stay tuned and we'll get started very shortly. And if you're new, please click above, go and watch the first video and come back to us after that. Let's get started. All right, so now we are at the step where we will break the chain. Uh, in order to break the chain, I got my Motion Pro uh, PBR chain tool. Uh, this tool is just amazing. Uh, I've had it for, for quite a while and it works with all my chains. I've been using it at the track in the garage. I have nothing but good things to say about this, so it's definitely worth the investment. The only thing I would say is that in order to keep this working properly, uh, just before you use it, uh, like most of the, uh, the tools that are mechanical like this, just put a little bit of, uh, of grease on it. Make sure that it's, it's greased properly, it's oiled properly so that when you're treading and when you're pushing stuff with the pins, there's good lubrication that will keep it usable for a long time. Uh, in order to break the chain with the, uh, the PBR tool, you're, uh, you just align the B on the block with the, the brake uh, option. And then uh, with a 17 millimeter wrench, you'll be tightening this against the, the chain plate and then you'll use the 14 mil to push the pin across on the other side to break the chain. A dab of grease on this to make sure that it's nice and well lubricated. After that, I'll just secure it on, uh, on the chain. So I'm just gonna back up the 17 mil, line up the two holes properly or the, uh, the recess area of the uh, block and the master bolt here and then we'll tighten the 14 mil on the outside, hold this properly and keep screwing that, uh, that extractor bolt until the pin is gonna fall on the other side. And once this is done, obviously, we will have the pin that will be falling out here. So this is the pin uh, has been removed and now uh, the chain is, uh, is free and obviously when you're removing this you will have these little, uh, little uh, washer, your uh, o-rings uh, that will uh, fall off as well. Again, if you don't plan on reusing this, uh, no need to keep these o-rings. If you have an, uh, an aftermarket chain uh, and you want to reinstall it, uh, I would probably recommend getting some new o-rings and a new pin or a new plate or a new rivet, I should say, then you can reinstall it. All right, so uh, this is done here. So what we'll do is that we'll just gently pull this out without trying to scratch anything here. So we're gonna put this aside for now and uh, we can also now remove, uh, remove the sprocket. So here we have the sprocket that we loosened up earlier. So now that will uh, easily come out as well. So now I'm able to uh, clean this up and we will install the new 415 sprocket uh, with the washer and with the new uh, R6 locking nut as well. All right, so uh, now that we've removed uh, the old sprocket, uh, this, that was the old sprockets, as you can see, it's quite, uh, quite thick, quite big compared to the new one, which is going to be a lot, a lot narrower. Uh, and same thing for the chain, obviously the chain will be narrower, therefore lighter. Uh, for those of you who wonder, uh, this, the weight savings, uh, 
it's about 40 between 40 and 45 gram when you install this you want to have the uh there's a there's a side of that sprocket that has a little uh ledge and you want the flat part facing the outside of the bike so again flat side outside and the raised part will go inside the, towards the bike itself Don't forget your washer, and then obviously we'll put the, the nut back on after that. I won't be tightening this uh, right away. I'm just going to snug it up and um, put the chain, install the wheel, and after that when the chain is on, uh, I'll uh, be able to use the chain to keep everything in place and we'll tighten it this way. So this area right here, you can see there's a little... Um, there's a little uh, notch here. So this is where we're gonna take the uh, screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver with a hammer, and I'm just gonna push this in so that we'll prevent that nut from uh, backing out. We're now all set to install the wheel. What I did off camera is that I put a tin layer of grease on the axle. So I normally just take my finger, put some grease along, and just rub it properly so that there's a tin film of grease prevents uh, corrosion but also a lot easier to slide this on and off uh, of the wheel uh, when you are mounting or unmounting uh, the wheel. One thing that you really want to use as well and leverage is the uh, pitbull wedge uh, so that's definitely going to make your life easier and uh, lets you uh, work more comfortably on the bike especially when you're doing this by yourself. So normally I just line up everything up and I just raise uh, the height of the wedge until it touches the tire. And when it does, then I don't have to use my left arm and do all this lifting uh, while I'm trying to line up the axle in the, uh, and the chain adjuster and also the uh, in, into the wheel itself. So here we go. Here we go. So now I'm going to put this in place here, put the nut on and I'm not gonna put this too too tight for now because I want to um, be able to readjust readjust everything with the chain and figure out the, the length required for uh, the chain. So now that we have this installed I can simply just use my side cutters and cut the um, cut the zip ties that I put here as well. So there we go. Now we have this in place. I can lower my wedge here. The wheel's mounted, and we will be able to uh, get the chain out, uh, put it on the bike, adjust it, make sure that we have the right length. Then be all set to put everything back or no, just snug everything back to, uh, to spec and uh, make sure that the bike is all good. So overall, I think it looks pretty good. Like it's all black now. Uh, that's the look I was looking for as well. So I'm quite happy about this. And uh, yeah, let's get the chain on. Uh, this chain that I'll be installing is the uh, 415 ERZ uh, or ERZ, whatever uh, you know, uh, makes sense for you. This one, uh, obviously, if you're going to use this, will require a lot more care than the OEM chain. So this is definitely not a chain for the road. This is mostly a chain for the track. The, uh, the lifespan of this will be a lot shorter than, than your regular uh, O-ring chain or X-ring chain because, uh, because, again, you don't have these O-rings. So you need to uh, lubricate this on a regular basis. I would say, you know, after every uh, couple of hours of riding or, uh, you know, maybe a few hours of riding at most, you'll need to clean and um, re-lubricate uh, the chain. And I just realized that uh, I had ordered the, uh, the rivet type clips. 
uh, for the chain. And what came with this, I believe, is the uh, just the retaining clip, which I'm definitely not going to use. Uh, I guess there's no clip. That's interesting. There was no uh, no retaining clip with this one. I thought it was coming uh, as a standard uh, with the chain. But let's see if this one has a clip or a rivet. Yeah, see this one has, um, this is the chain link, uh, but it's a clip. Uh, and I'm definitely not going to use this. Uh, I think this is not appropriate for uh, track bikes, in my opinion. So uh, I just ordered some extra uh, clips, rivet type clips or links. Uh, and I'll be installing this hopefully tomorrow when it comes in. So uh, I won't be able to finish the installation today. And it's getting pretty late now, so I'll probably wrap this up soon. I'll just put the chain on, uh, adjust the length, and I'll uh, install the uh, rivets hopefully tomorrow. So I'll have this on video as well. But just to let you know that uh, when you are ordering the chain, especially if you're going to do track days and change uh, your sprockets on a regular basis, order a ton of these because they're very they're very helpful you know, like not necessarily these but the uh, the rivet type uh, and that's going to be a good uh, a good option to have so the chain itself uh, is going to be a lot easier or a lot uh, lighter uh, than the, the, the euro chain and obviously uh, a lot <laughs> this is the uh, OEM chain and this is the the 415 chain so you can see the links are much 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 smaller uh much narrower as well so obviously that's going to make a big difference on weight and since you don't have the o-rings on this one you're saving you're saving even more weight this one i think has two extra links if i'm not mistaken so i think i, I plan on yes yeah, so this one this is a 144 so 144 links we're all set to install the chain again uh, the front sprocket has been installed, the back sprocket has been installed, the, the, the new rear uh, rotor has been installed. I got the titanium uh, studs and bolts on, uh, on that wheel as well, it's been installed. But right now what I want to do is adjust uh, where the wheel will be and also the size of the chain. Normally a lot of people would clean uh, the chain first. I don't see uh, a big need for this right now because it's still winter time. I'm gonna leave the, the bike inside for a bit longer, so this is not a must for me to clean this right away. And I like the extra lubrication anyway, so it's not too, too bad. Uh, but obviously, I'll clean this up before uh, track season starts. All right, so now the chain is on, and we will, um, we will be able to adjust where the wheel should be. So I'm gonna just start with uh, adjusting this. So it's gonna be pretty much in the middle and then I have uh, room to move it back and forth. Once the chain tensioner is adjusted properly, I'll tighten the wheel a bit and make sure it's uh, properly aligned. And then we will cut the chain to the right length. I'll do this off camera for now. Once uh, the wheel is uh, properly centered, it's tightened back into place. I'll come back and we'll start adjusting the chain to uh, the right length. My wheel that's adjusted pretty much in the middle of the tensioner. If uh, I need to move it forward, I can move it forward a bit. And if I need to move it backward, because uh, with a 415 chain, it will have a tendency to stretch uh, a bit more than your regular OEM chain. When I'm, um, you know, when I'm adjusting the wheel, obviously I'm going to take this into consideration so that after a few hours of riding, I will need to push the wheel back so the chain uh, stays at the same uh, tension. So having said that, uh, I've, you know, I know for a fact that with the 18 tooth in front and the 55 uh, in the back, I will need the chain to be 142 links. When I switch to the 57 tooth in the back and I keep the same 18 front uh, sprocket, uh, then I will need to change the chain to the 144 length. And this is why I got the two chains uh, originally, because I knew that those would probably or most likely be 
my uh, two favorite options based on the tracks that I'm riding at. Uh, now, what I need to do is cut the chain to the right length. However, if you are like me and you have multiple bikes and you are using the Motion Pro PBR tool that I was using earlier to take the chain off, you will know that the rod that's pushing the pins is too big. So this pin here is too big uh, and will not fit. I repeat this because this is really important. This will not fit in your 415 chain. So the, the best way to do this right now, I've, uh, again, with COVID these days, I'm, uh, I'm still waiting for, for different tools and, and parts to come in. So I don't, have, uh, I don't have the new tool that I ordered to break the chain, the 415 chain. So what I'm gonna do is I will use, I had to do a bit of, of digging on this one, but I, I will use uh, just a regular uh, mountain bike, a regular you know, pedal bike um, a chain, uh, a chain tool for a pedal bike. And this will allow me to break this specific chain but this is not solid enough to uh, break the chain. So what I will do first, I'm going to take my Dremel tool and I will Dremel out the mushroom part at the top of the rivet. And then I will use uh, the, this tool to push the pin out. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to take the chain off the bike and I'll go on the workbench and I'll Dremel this out. I'll push the, uh, the pin out and uh, we'll be back to uh, finalize the installation. There's a few things I want to talk about first. I mentioned that tool earlier. So basically what you want to do is make sure that the, uh, the pin uh, from the uh, extractor tool here will fit uh, in the plate of your uh, chain link. So basically uh, what you're doing is just making sure that everything fits in and uh, it's not going to push on the plate. So you can see here that this is where the pin is going through and you can see in the middle the pin goes through that plate. So this is really uh, critical. I took a sharpie and marked it just to make sure that I would cut at the right location so you can see here it's black. And what you want basically is to be able to connect both ends together. Uh, you want female to female at both ends because your plate that you'll be using will be a male plate that will go on top. I got the uh, Dremel with the cutting disc and I'm just gonna go over this and just try to uh, remove as much of the mushroom part of the rivet so then I can push it out. And what I'm gonna do as well, just put some paper towels so that there's no dust and, and grime that goes on the rest of the chain. So that should be more than enough here, hopefully. And now we're just gonna take this uh, tool and we should be able to start pushing this out without any issues at all here. Just make sure that there's enough room for the pin, the retractor pin to uh, go in. All right, so it turns out that this uh, chain tool for a bicycle uh, wasn't working because the roller of the chain was too big. Well, the pin on the uh, the breaker tool wasn't aligning, aligning properly with the pin on the chain. So luckily I uh, managed to find a second uh, t a chain tool for bicycles. So this one seems to be working okay. Oh yeah, so this one is going uh, through right away. So with no issues here, uh, it's pushing that pin and it's perfect alignment. I think the problem is with this one is that the pin of the extractor tool uh, is not pushing far enough so uh, it's not reaching all the way through so I might just need to have a take a little punch or something to push it out completely so I have a rivet here so I'll just try with a rivet and see if I can push it through So that needed a bit of creative thinking, but we finally got it out. I'm gonna put that chain back on and uh, then we will 
readjust the, the back wheel or adjust the back wheel to make sure that it's the right uh, the right length and I should not say the right length but I mean the right tension in the chain so that chain has uh, enough slack to uh, travel uh, when the bike suspension is uh, is in action so just for now I'm going to put the uh, the clip that came in with uh, the chain I'm not gonna be able to install the rivet today obviously because I still don't have it uh, but this one uh, it's just the uh, clip on rivet and uh, that should be good enough for now just to adjust the uh, just to adjust the wheel uh, we are getting a little bit closer I think this is maybe a bit too tight again just gonna do just one minor last adjustment maybe just a quarter turn and this is more like it here this is what I like to see here and uh, now we will make sure that the tensioner has the same distance on both sides. All right, I think we're okay for the adjustment here. So I'm gonna secure this in place here so that it doesn't move. I have the slack that I'm looking for in the chain. Uh, there are specs online on this. I'm not gonna look at the specs right away because I'll probably do some more adjustments. I still have to install the new wheels or my, uh, my second set of wheels. So I'll have a different uh, sprocket. So I'm, I'm relatively pleased with this. So I'm gonna secure this in place. After that, I'll, uh, I'll tighten the nut for the front sprocket and we'll make sure that the chain is aligned and we can call it a day. We're going to secure uh, or we're going to no, tighten the, uh, the socket or the, uh, the nut for uh, the front sprocket and the torque specs for this are 75 nanometers. In order to do this, obviously, I'll need to jam something in the wheel in the back so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't move. So I got a breaker bar. I'm just gonna simply wrap it with uh, a towel here so it doesn't uh, scratch anything. And we'll just shove it in here, make sure that it goes from side to side and We'll push this up a bit here so it stays in place and while I'm doing this with one hand I'm gonna secure my socket and we will start wrenching and see if we can get to 75 nanometers all right so that's it we are all set here that's been secure Last thing that needs to be done here before I go and have a beer <laughs> is to uh, crush that little uh, that little spacer here. I'm just going to use a, a cold chisel, so I'll have different chisels here, and I'm going to try to find something that will uh, do the trick. And maybe I'll just use a flat tip uh, chisel here, and I'll just uh, tap it on top uh, with the mallet, and that should do the trick. That should hold it in place here. You can see that it's uh, just bent a little bit, but I mean, this little extra tab gives you that uh, extra security, I guess, on the bike because uh, it shouldn't back up after that.
so now uh, I'm going to use the chain tool, make sure that the uh, chain is well aligned. So this is the Motion Pro chain alignment tool. And basically what you're doing with this is that you just secure it on your sprocket. And what I'm going to do now is just like just slowly roll this up. And that metal rod should line up properly uh, with the chain. And if it doesn't, then you know that you have to readjust your your uh, your tensioner and adjust your now, wheels. And the uh, the alignment tool is uh, straight on, and I've checked the wheel on both sides. Uh, everything is uh, straight. Uh, the project is done. Uh, overall, I think it went fairly well. Uh, not super complex, it's just time consuming and uh, the train, the chain uh, adapter or the chain breaker uh, threw me off a little bit. I, I definitely didn't think about this up front, but I mean obviously now I'll know for next time. I, uh, I have a new uh, chain breaker coming in uh, because obviously on the track the last thing I want to do is to have to take the Dremel out and Dremel this so I got a good chain breaker that I can use in standalone without having to grind the chain. So that will be here uh, hopefully later this week. Tomorrow I'll have the, um, the chain link with the uh, rivet option. I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to use the clip-on. I don't think it's as solid, and I'll uh, I'll rivet the chain uh, on tomorrow, and I'll post this as well, uh, probably in a follow-up video, uh, because this one's going to be a bit longer than I than I expected. When you do this, when you change your gearing, your speedometer or your tachometer will be impacted. So be conscious of this. Uh, you know your your speed readings might be different. In my case, uh, with my new uh, multi-display, I think I'll be able to take this into consideration and just plug in the uh, size of the sprockets and it will readjust the speed accordingly. And then we also have a, a lap timer that shows me the GPS speed, so I'm able to compare. So with both of these options, I think I'll be fine. I don't see this being an issue. And to be honest, at the track, I'm more concerned with lap time as opposed to uh, max speed or average speed. So uh, speed is important, but overall my lap time is more important and the GPS um, data logger will be able to show me the data that I'm looking for anyhow. And uh, I think those are the main things. I mean, obviously I didn't test the brakes because I don't have any um, brake fluid in the lines right now. I want to do the reservoir delete in the back before I complete uh, the brake. But obviously when you're doing this, uh, just make sure that you pump your brakes and test your brakes before you go uh, on the road or on the track. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall that's it. So if you have any comments or questions, please post them below and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.